Joe Pay here. I'm at the uh, Gilmore Museum, and uh, we are at a Kalamazoo Auto Restorers Club event at the Gilmore Museum. And it just so happens that uh, this is also within that subgroup celebration of Checkers 100th anniversary at the Gilmore. And there's a uh, rumor has it there's a bunch of Checkers here. Uh, so I'll try to go in undercover. Uh, a secret sleuth and see what we have here from a from a checker checker standpoint but if you've ever been to the uh, Gilmore this is just a, a fantastic museum and uh, I'll, I'll give you a pan of the uh, some of the architecture they have here and, and, and dealership recreations that are, are just spectacular This is uh, Don McHenry's old car. Don was the founder of the Checker Car Club of America. Don is still alive. Wow, here's the original price list. This thing cost $3,234. Robert Hayes, Kalamazoo, Michigan. So he bought it right here in Kalamazoo. Very nice car. Don is 95 years old. And thankfully, he's still kicking, and we wish him the best of luck. He certainly has a beautiful car here. We have another wagon. This one is a 1973. It has 
the uh, hydraulic bumper system removed. This should have a hydraulic system, but it doesn't. These uh, wagons are becoming really, really popular now. I can attest to it. I had one recently and sold it for a good, good amount. Another wagon. Really like the two-tone. This looks like it's a, uh, what year is this? This is a 1970. Jack is a former uh, employee of Checker. You were there from like 73 to like... Uh, January 71 to... To 99 or... I mean to 2008? Yeah, to 2008. Yeah. Wow. How long have you owned this now? You've had this about what, five, five, five years? Yeah, okay. I do remember you, when you bought it. Yeah. Excellent. And them are the original sewing machines that sold the interior on the cabs. Are they really? Right. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Did I checker use these things? Yep, the uh, uh, new sold on uh, interior. Amazing. Yeah. Well, you gotta, are these sewing machines yours? Or, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Excellent, excellent. You, you messaged me the other night, so you found what you were looking for, I hope, yeah, right? Yeah, well, I had to go to the checker site. Okay. And I found, found what I was looking for. I couldn't find them on your site. Okay, okay. Oh, they have the they have the newsletters too. Which one? No, you posted it. Yeah, I have it. Yeah, okay. So that's how I found it again. Well, we're trying to get more. I'm working with some folks to see if we can fill in some of the gaps. Yeah, have... That's good looking through all of them. Oh, it's fun. I uh, yeah. some folks are putting it on the Checker employee group on Facebook, so I've been seeing some of them there and at least scraping off some of the articles and reprinting them on the website. Yeah. Good deal. Good seeing you, sir. Yeah, you too, Joe. I'm going to do my videotaping. It's an 82. Winkoff. The Winkoffs were uh, special models built off of uh, a Checker Taxi A11 platform and uh, dolled up. Dolled up big time. Hi there, how you doing? Good, Nancy. How you doing? Nan this is Nancy. Nancy's the owner. You've had this now almost almost 20 years, right? Uh, my dad bought it from Mark Winkoff in 1982. Oh, okay. So it's been in the family since new, but and you've had it at least Well, since... I'm the only driver it's ever had because my dad bought it as a second checker. Okay. Yeah, okay. he bought his first checker for his second wife. Okay. She wanted another one for when the first one wore out. Okay. <laughs> So, but then they got divorced and he put it in my name and so it's just been sitting in it's just been sitting in it had been sitting in my grandmother's garage she also had a check right right well and i remember seeing it at uh in in uh, donner's not Don, lyle lyle illinois no, in the oh, shop uh, yeah it, that was like 15 years ago easily right oh god it must have been well, yeah it was longer than 15 years ago. yeah I mean, probably was, it was like uh, right after i worked on mine that was almost 20 years ago yeah 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 wow. i think that was that makes sense because we got married that's when we brought it up to to, uh, to Chicago. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no, I've I've had the car. Mark and I are the only drivers it's ever had. Wow. And we that, just uh, looked so you're, it up. So you're effective, you're, you're effectively the original owners. Yeah. Excellent. There aren't that many of those left. No, no. No, I only know of a handful of folks. Ben yeah. Merkel is one, and uh, Brian Babish, you, yeah. not too many others. Yeah. My. Um, my grandmother had been the original owner of her car, but when she passed away, we, we sold that one, which looks a lot like Ben Merkel's. Right, uh, but right. was it didn't have the sunroof, and it was uh, light blue. But that right. one also, this one and um, all the ones that my family had were all from Mark Winkoff's Fort Lauderdale uh, shop. shop. So it was after okay. he, he closed the New Jersey shop. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Chris shop. Markin said there were some... <laughs> Some shady dealings with that operation. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He apparently was fired from Checker uh, Corporate because of uh, just a uh, 
fraud is probably the best oh, word to use. Really? But they felt sorry for him and they gave him the franchise. No. Yeah, that that's well, and that's what the Markin family told me. So that's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, interesting. That's really interesting. I interviewed my dad a few years back for the newsletter for the uh, Checker Car Club of America, and I, I need to look up that article, but. Um, Dad came with us to the last couple conventions. Yeah. And I, at one point, I just sat him down. I was like, "Tell me everything you know about Mark." Wayne now, d is he has he passed? Oh no, my dad's. Still oh no, go go. It was sounding like he wasn't around. Yeah, no, okay. I, I realized. I realized it sounded that way. Yeah. No, no, Dad's Dad's alive and well. Um, well, not well enough to have made the trip right. up here with right. us on this one, but um, he's alive and well, and he. Yeah, I just was like, you know, Mark. Sounds like quite a character, and I wanted to know more about it. I'm, so. I'm sure he was. <laughs> take care, guys. Yeah, yeah, just videotape so in here. You. Good deal. I love your numbers from when it was in Lyle. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is the uh, car was there. 78. Yeah, yeah I, I almost I toyed with the idea of driving it today. I've just totally redone the transmission, and it's up. It's running really well, but. But you chose not to drive it. Yeah, because I wanted to get in and out quickly, and I didn't uh, want to sure. risk. If I've had sure. some issues with it the last couple times, yeah. so. Oh <laughs> so. uh, well, you know oh. we've got thirty-two of them here today. I'm impressed. Yeah, I'm impressed. I mean, you include the medicap. Yep. Yep. Anniversary. It was yep. A good good, good deal. Great to see you again. Good seeing you, Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> this is an eighty-two. I, I love this one. This one has got a, a really nice, plain look about it. Uh, I, I'm guessing, is this an A11? Oh, it's an A12, so it's a marathon. It's, oh, it says marathon right on the uh, fender. This is one of the last marathons that were made. Very nice. Here's a uh, 76. Very nice. This one has uh, a factory sunroof and also the uh, closed window option. What's really nice is that this roof looks totally solid. These tend to bubble up with rust, but this is looking really, really good. Another, uh, another one here with a vinyl roof also looks pretty darn solid. This is a uh, 68. Nineteen seventy came up from West Virginia. This one's been modified many times over the years. I know this one well major feature of the wheels and uh, lights in the back and really nice a lot of nice 812 wagons here today sixty seven eight eight twelve let's see if it has the sixty seven yep it has the sixty seven hubcaps these hubcaps are a one year only hubcap it's a modification of the previous years. It has this lip, these two lips that pop out. Uh, and then the next year they went to the uh, modified Studebaker. Modified Studebaker uh, hubcaps. So this is a <laughs> extremely powerful checker. Look at this engine. I'm, uh, I'm assuming this is some sort of a Corvette engine modification. Really nice. Turbo taxi. So uh, 32 cars, that's a big turnout. Probably one of the biggest turnouts in quite a while. This is one of these uh, wink offs. This one needs some help. It's got some uh, major rush, rust issues on it. 
some uh, custom wheels. The Veenstra team, they've been using this car here in Kalamazoo professionally for a long, long time. Guys, uh, David's a uh, ICCA member, we love him. He's, uh, he always helps and participates and chimes in. This car is interesting. This used to be owned by Steve Wilson, a board member of the Checker Car Club. Uh, it was then sold after Steve passed away. It was actually sold to Dave uh, Eldridge. Dave uh, passed away very recently in the last uh, four weeks. And now uh, this is up for sale. So if anybody's interested in buying this, Here's the number. This is a golden anniversary car, so this is a 72, and uh, it's it's nothing short of pristine. This is a, a 74 marathon wagon, and the interesting about thing about these wagons is that this is the last year for the wagon, and more importantly. It's the only year that the wagon ever used these uh, immense girder bumpers. Uh, the aero buses, which continued on for several more years, never used them. So these are the only wagon-based checkers that uh, that used uh, the girder bumper. This is the famous Champer. This was, uh, I believe it's a 67. No, it's a 66 Checker. But in the early 70s, a company based out of California converted this to a camper. Nice professional job. Look at the uh, eight wheel lugs. So uh, it's more like a truck. Real nice A12. I think this is an 82 Bill Perkins owns this. Always restored with impeccable craftsmanship. Oh, actually, it's an 81. Another Perkins car. This is Bill Perkins' father's car. I think it's the first checker that he owned. I think his son uses it now. And then this is also. A Birkins car. So uh, they've got quite a fleet here today. They've got one, two, three, four, five cars here in the show, and one actually the uh, eight door limo in the uh, barn in the museum is their car as well. Classic New York taxi in the post 1969 livery. This is also a, this would be a taxi clone. It's a 78, it's been converted with the chrome bumpers. Uh, it's a marathon, so it's not an A11, but it's been converted. Looks like a lot of money was spent on it, including some nice upholstery work. The Bowers. Bowers bought this car from uh, Dan Smith a couple years ago. Real, real nice car, also a clone. You can tell the clone because of the, uh, the chrome strips. Uh, it's a 66 and as well, this would be painted for New York. This is actually the wrong color. Uh, New York in 66 would have been uh, green. Standard would have been green and uh, yellow, not, not the yellow post-1969 color. Another wink off. This is interesting. This is a wink off, but uh, and it literally says it in the window. No vinyl top. These again, it's an A11, and the A11 was converted uh, by wink off to more of a higher end luxury version. We are going to interrupt this conversation here with uh, the checker god. 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> Run away. Here. Trouble's here. Trouble? Trouble. Hey, Ben. How you doing, Joe? Good to see you, sir. This is Jim. Do you ever know Jim Barton? Jim Barton. I know the name. Sales and service rep for Trevor. Yeah. Okay. Okay. His daughter, Karen. Right. Oh, nice to meet you. Wonderful. You well, Checker, uh, Checker and I are like Ben's favorite subject, right? <laughs> ben, ben, ben and I wrote, 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 wrote a book. So, right. together. So I we're, brought some. We're, we're brought co some oh, good. Them. Trying to unload them. Yes. So unwitting victims. <laughs> fuck some new blood. They think monkey pops is bad news. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna exactly. They, I'm gonna give them something they can't get rid of. Absolutely. <laughs> by their relatives. <laughs> this is a, uh, I believe it's an 82 checker. Uh, it's owned actually by uh, Rick Bergen, a former checker employee. Uh, it's a tribute to his father, who was also a checker employee. He built this about six years ago. Very nice car. Pride of Kalamazoo, another really nice checker. Also Rick Bergen's. He's been showing this one as well for about 10 years. And here we have checker god Ben Merkel. Ben has his uh, A2, I'm sorry, A12, 11, A11, I'm sorry, A11E. Uh, and uh, we've seen this car before he takes it to our shows. Not so much anymore. Another, another really nice checker. This is an A12 pre-1972. Yeah, it's a 69. And here we have another can, same color. 82. See, it's interesting to see the, the difference of the, these two cars in the span of years. So. This is a 69, and this is a 69 on the left and an 82 on the right. The big difference is the bumpers. Uh, this one actually has the uh, closed window option. So your your father, why don't you tell us who your father was? Jim Barton. He was the sales and service rep for Checker Motors. Wow. And how long this did he work for Checker? That's his original Checker? demo. That's his demo car. It's his oh. demo in 76, and I believe... I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember how long he worked there. Um, wow. He quit prior to them shutting down. So oh, really? So he stayed right up through the, the stamping period? Yellow cab okay. And bought his own cab company. Moved oh, wow. Nice. Well, very good. Thank you. <laughs> this is the nicest Medi car I've ever seen. All right, folks. One of our volunteers has actually lost their bag. Sorry, sorry. Very nice. I've never seen a Medicar this nice before. This is beautiful. Bring it over here to the Kalamazoo Antique Auto Restores Club Volunteer Tent. We are over by the gas station. This is a 1936 Checker Model Y. Produced during the years when Checker was owned by Auburn Court Duesenberg. This is, I think, the first Checker with a X brace frame. We're going to go underneath and take a quick peek. There you go, there it is. It's parked next to a Model T. Model T is from 1933. Again, produced during the period where Auburn Cord Duesenberg owned Checker. This was also produced as a badge engineered Auburn safety cab for Cleveland operators. And it's parked next to a Checker Model Y. Again, the first Checker with a X brace frame. And then we have the Checker Model M, 1931. Again, the 31 is based effectively on the 1928 Checker Model K. Uh, the Checker Model M and the T do not have the x brace frame like the Model Y. Notice the cowls on these cars are all more or less the same. These cars were all derived from the Model K. 
Um, however, this is obviously a highly modified version. And again, it has the uh, X-Brace frame where these two don't. Checker Model C. This is a 1923. This would be second year of production. August 15th is the anniversary, the 99th anniversary of Checker engineer Jim Stout's employment. This would have been one of the first cars he worked on. Uh, he was with Checker up until the uh, 1970s, uh, as late as uh, maybe even as early as 19, 1980s, where he was involved with the restoration of this model Y. He picked the car up. I was 20 months old. Uh, my sister was there. My mom was there. And now the checker, it was our family car. It has 306,750 miles on it. May not look that way, but my dad babied this car all his life. Uh, my, my dad is alive. He's currently 98 years old. He lives in Buffalo still. He a little too old to make the trip. And yeah, it, it's uh, Buffalo, New York. Um, my mom passed in December at the age of 93. Um, a few things on a personal note on this car. I learned to drive on this car. I think everybody should learn how to drive a stick shift car to begin with. I took my road test on this car. As brave as I was, a, a station wagon, no power steering, three on the tree. And, uh, you know, fairly impressive for a young kid of 16 to do that. Um, I also took it to my prom. The checker has not been driven until this week since 2010. My dad loves the Gilmore Museum. He held several conventions, checker car club conventions here over the years. And in celebration of the 100th year of checker, the 40th year of the club, we're donating check thank you thank you so much what a neat legacy not only did your father start the checker club and all the cars we see here because of that um, but the family and your father have decided to donate this car and so this will become part of our Kalamazoo collection of cars and like I said earlier, make sure you get into Carriage House and see the checkers in there. One thing that people probably don't realize, not only do checker make cars, they make taxis, right? They also tried to do a lot in the, uh, the market that wasn't for the taxi owner. And so this is a station wagon made for an individual, not for a taxi service. And when they came to buy this here in Kalamazoo, they got it through Orrin B. Hayes because they weren't a taxi service. Now the taxi service was quit in 1982. And we have the very last taxi off the assembly line right inside that room. And it has, I want to say nine miles or 12 miles, whatever it is, whatever it is from Checker Motors to here, because they drove it from there here. Um, so we now have probably the lowest mileage Checker known to exist and one to join it with 306,000 miles. I think that's pretty amazing. When Checker quit making cars in 1982, they continued making body parts, panels, for all different types of vehicles. So we have a, um, I think there's a, a, a roof or a trunk, no, there's a trunk lid from a Saturn that Checker made. We have two park benches that we've made that have tailgates. One's a Dodge pickup tailgate and one's a Chevy tailgate. Those were made by Checker Motors years after they made taxis. This is the last Checker that was ever made. 1982 checker this is brand new it has 9.8 miles on it it has never been driven on the road and it sits in this museum donated by the Markin family the owners and founders of checker motors here's some body stampings that checker also did for Dodge the Dodge van and this is a Saturn deck lid. This is a Phantom Jeep. And uh, 
These were built, three of these were built by Checker. Uh, they're actually knockdown units. They were uh, they're serial numbered as Bantam Jeeps and they were effectively assembled as test production. Uh, Checker had signed a contract with Bantam uh, that if there was overflow production, if they had won the Jeep contract from the US government, Checker would pick up the slack and assemble uh, Jeeps for Bantam. Unfortunately, the government wasn't happy with that solution and Bantam lost the contract and Jeep production went to Willis, Willis and uh, Ford. So we're going to uh, kind of wrap it up for the day. Uh, I believe I got a photograph of every single checker here. Got to talk to some nice checker folks. And more importantly, we got to uh, hear the tribute and see the donation by uh, Don McHenry's family and Don himself uh, of his checker uh, 1960 Superba wagon going to the uh, Gilmore Museum. So with that, I'm gonna exit out of this complex uh, and uh, we'll just take some videos of some of the uh, uh, automotive architecture. Uh, there's a series of uh, showrooms that are very impressive that have been built here over the last 10 years. So with that, thanks uh, for watching. The we want to uh, thank the Kalamazoo Antique Auto Restorers Club for putting on a really great event. Uh, this is the sanctioning body that held this show here at Gilmore and allowed us to see all these wonderful checkers. This is the other part of the show that's going on. You can see all the cars being judged and uh, just high quality vehicles ranging from the 1920s, like this vehicle here. And there's a 30s Packard. I think that's a Mercury over there, all the way up to the uh, 70s. And even look at that, that's like a late 2000s, early 2000s Mustang. Uh, what is absolutely phenomenal at this uh, event are these structures that are at sort of the, I guess you would call it sort of a, a causeway, I don't know, causeway or uh, entrance to the, uh, the event. Look at this, uh, 1962 Dodge, one of the quirkiest cars ever produced in the United States. I'm sorry, I just want to break for a second because these are insane looking. I used to own one of these, so I have a little passion for them. That's a 330. Look at that ugly looking grill. Isn't that, isn't that something? But in any event, here's, here's the Lincoln showroom. We'll take a quick peek in here. Motor cars. Wow. Lincoln Design Excellence. So I, I, I believe these, these showrooms are, are built essentially with sponsorship. From, from Ford Motors, and, and in this case, the Lincoln division. Beautiful, beautiful mark here. And the mark, Lincoln Continental II here. Look at this, this is a uh, 1940 Lincoln with a Durham body. The classic Durham body. It's nicely air conditioned too. As we exit, then we get to see this beautiful Cadillac dealership. Look at this structure. Beautiful Lincolns sitting in the showroom. Again, main showroom, there's a LaSalle. 
beautiful Lincolns. <laughs> beautiful Cadillacs, what am I saying? come out here and just do a separate video on these, each one of these buildings. Look at that front structure. Beautiful. Recreation of a Ford dealership. So it's the Model A. So it's a, this is basically an adjunct museum, the Model A museum, and it's on the grounds of the uh, Gilmore Museum. And here's a Franklin Motor Cars. Their their structure. And now we have people coming out. Sharp looking Ford. Remember this? The Volkswagen thing. What kind of thing is that? <laughs> That's right. 